Donald Trump said, I am going to stick up for you. I'm going to be your champion. That is something new. And of course, he is a Republican. Uh, the Republican Party is effectively the white person's party, uh, whether it wants to admit it or not. The end game for the immediate future is raising identitarian consciousness among white people in the United States and around the world. That is my goal. That was white nationalist Richard Spencer at Texas A&M University. His speech par sparking wide protests around the campus. There was a counter event that drew hundreds of students and community members as well. Now last night, state troopers dressed in full riot gear pushed protesters back from inside the Memorial Student Center where he was speaking. Now, Spencer made national headlines just a few weeks ago when he spoke at an alt-right conference hosted by his organization, the National Policy Institute. According to the Associated Press, around 400 people attended Spencer's address last night. Two non-students were arrested during the protest. And joining me now, Roland Martin, host and managing editor of News One Now, who took part in the Aggies United Counter Rally. He's also a Texas A&M alumnus. Uh, Roland, let's talk about the attention this guy is getting. Richard Spencer, obviously he knows bringing in the president-elect's name. Um, puts the spotlight on how and what he is saying. He's trying to turn this into, I, I guess, uh, a representation of where we are led by this new president-elect. What did you make of some of those people who went to hear him? Were they curious? Were they followers? What was it? First of all, uh, he only had about uh, a dozen or so uh, followers who were there. There were some people who were curious, but for the most part, uh, the Texas A&M students were itching to get at him. Uh, I was actually, uh, the event that uh, the Aggies United event was from 6 to 9. I was supposed to speak around 8.30, so about 7 o'clock I went over to the Memorial Student Center. So I was there uh, in that scrum. Uh, they were not allowing anyone to go upstairs. Fire Marshal had, had it shut down as well because it was filled to capacity. But there were students who were protesting. Uh, down there. Uh, they were playing uh, uh, Don't Believe the Hype from Spike Lee's uh, Do the Right Thing uh, on loudspeakers. There were chants. They wanted to confront Richard Spencer and his views. And so uh, it, was, uh, it was very interesting watching this reaction. And look, this wasn't just black and Latino students who wanted a piece of Richard Spencer. You had white students who said they flat out did not agree with what he had to say. You know, uh, Roland, Richard Spencer is probably going to keep his views for a very long time. And if he only had about 12 supporters there. Do you see it as worth it for those students to show up, two of them being arrested, yes. rather than focusing in on the alternative in, uh, event that was going on? Why do you believe it's worth it when he had 12 people on the campus of the second largest university in this country? Because when Steve Bannon says that Breitbart was designed as the home of the alt-right, understand this thing goes way beyond Richard Spencer. When you look at the data, when you look, listen to the people, the things that they say that Donald Trump rallies, when you look at the polling data uh, that was done all throughout this year where 50 percent of Donald Trump supporters said black folks were lazy and criminals, their views about Muslims, their views about uh, illegal immigrants, their, their views about uh, Latinos, their views about LGBT, understand and Richard, Spence, Richard Spencer is not some guy who's just sort of out there in the wilderness. Yes, he is to the extreme, but that was a guy who I ran to last night. White guy, 67 years old, served in the military, and he said, well, you know, I wanted to come out and hear some of the things that he had to say. He couldn't get up. So he and I began uh, to debate, and he began to talk about how when he was in the military, there were some uh, black folks who were, as he said, coddled along and promoted, and they shouldn't have been promoted. And so I then began to tell him, I said, look, I, I said, I didn't get jobs because I was black. And I was yeah. told that. And so we had this debate and he said, well, you know, I've been waiting. This is what he told me. He said, I've been waiting for a guy like this to come along because some of the stuff that he says is right. Yeah, but, but, now, but, but this guy? Uh, let me point out two things here. First of all, the president elect has disavowed the alt right white nationalists and he's still receiving criticism for not coming out stronger. But for this gentleman to say, I've been waiting for a guy like Richard Spencer. We're both from Texas. We've lived in this country over 40 years. There are plenty of right. people just like Richard Spencer. It's not as and if what he's point. saying is new. So if someone was waiting for a message like this, there is no shortage of it out there. So why the attention on this character? Be because what we have seen in this election mm -hmm. is that what used to be the extreme has now been normalized. That's the difference. When the president-elect pushed ra racial buttons, and so it requires people of conscience to say, no, we're not going to be silent. We're not just going to say, well, that's just uh, too much attention. No, you must call it out. And what I said last night was very simple. We will fight bigotry. We will fight discrimination. We will fight hatred against anyone. And as my
My frat brother, Vertner Woodson Tandy, said, we will fight until hell freezes over, and then we will fight on the ice. Roland Martin, live for us. Thank you so much, Roland. Greatly appreciate you having Thanks us.